It's 2025, the year of the snake. What better time to build a snake robot? And it all started with this, an air pump. But how do you transform this into a crawling, slithering snake? Snakes have long been a symbol of transformation and when you watch them move, it's easy to see why. They are nature's ultimate shapeshifters. With no limbs, snakes rely on the fluidity of their entire body to explore the world. Look how it wraps itself around its trunk, a living rope, gripping from every angle. It seemingly glides across even the thinnest of branches. Effortlessly, it moves through the canopy. But of course, humans love to categorize things and have identified four basic styles of snake locomotion. First, lateral undulation, the classic fluid slithering we all recognize. Then, there's side winding, a twist on undulation where the snake lifts part of its body to move across loose or slippery surfaces. Concertina motion is more like an accordion, useful for tight spaces and climbing. And finally, rectilinear motion, a slow, steady crawl, inching forward like a caterpillar. Understanding these movements is key if you want to recreate them. But replicating nature isn't easy. Let's take a look at some existing robotic snakes. This one is basically a chain of servo motors bolted together. It works, and honestly, it's got some snake vibes. And this one? It even climbs stairs, but what's with all these wheels? Here's a softer one. That's some smooth undulation. But wait, are those wheels again? Seriously, what's with all these wheels? This one uses Kirigami, Origami's edgy cousin, to mimic rectilinear motion. So, how could our snake robot look like? There is a common belief that soft robots should be entirely soft. But, unless you live in the depths of the ocean, where gravity does not matter, that's not always ideal. Snakes combine soft and rigid structures. Their skin is a perfect example. Rigid scales for protection and friction, soft tissue for flexibility. And their internal structure? The same idea. A rigid skeleton, made of repeating units of vertebra and ribs, and soft muscles, forming a complex network between rigid skeletal elements. This combination of rigid structures and soft, flexible movement feels promising, but what could serve as a muscle? The answer came from something surprisingly simple, an air pump. Inside I found this membrane with four soft cylinders. These are known as rolling diaphragms. If I could replicate these, maybe I could create a soft contracting muscle. I recreated the soft cylinder in CAD and since I wanted to mold it in silicone, I designed a two-part mold. After injecting silicone and carefully demolding the part, I encased the soft cylinder between rigid 3D printed parts with an integrated fluid connection. And once I applied negative pressure using a syringe, it contracted. It wasn't perfect, it didn't fully contract, but good enough for our purposes. But one muscle doesn't make a snake. To create the basic unit of the robot, I designed a module of paired soft cylinders. 
After another round of injecting silicone, demolding, cleaning up, and assembly, I connected the modules to my electrofluidic system. Check out my last video for more on that. And sure enough, it bent left and right. To chain several of the basic units together, I added channels connecting their internal volumes. I punched holes into a newly cast silicon membrane and assembled the full stack. Now, with these two units working in parallel, the first signs of snake-like movement appeared. I wanted the final robot to bend into a full S shape. Since I planned to build it from four basic sections, each section needed to bend about 90 degrees. After some quick math, I figured that chaining five of my basic units together would achieve that curve. Taking inspiration from real snakes, I added scales to the robot's belly, not just for aesthetics, but to improve friction and movement. I printed the parts, cast more membranes and assembled a full section. Now it was time to test it. At first I used syringes to control the movement. The range of motion looked promising, but when I connected the section to my electrofluidic system, it only wiggled side to side, it wouldn't move forward. The smooth cutting mat was too slippery. Still, I liked how the belly scales overlapped when the robot bent. Looking for better traction, I tried acoustic foam. The textured side was too rough, so I opted for the flat back side. And sure enough, the robot started moving. I also tried the textured side. But yeah, that's not going anywhere. Finally, I tested some blue filter sponge. that surface seemed to work well too. After the promising test of a single section, it was time to scale up to the full robot. I made a few upgrades along the way, sleeker belly scales and additional scales on the back just for aesthetics, because why not? And I also added an internal channel to route the tubes powering each section, almost like a spinal cord. Then came countless hours of printing parts, injecting silicone and demolding the membranes. Hit like if you are enjoying the journey. Finally, it was time for assembly. At this point, it definitely had a snake-like vibe. I just love how the scales overlap as it bends. 
but to bring it to life I still had to add the tubing to power each section. I carefully routed the tubes through the spinal canal, weaving them together into a single umbilical cord held neatly in place with zip ties. To power and control the snake I built a new electrofluidic system. An Arduino Mega controls 8 solenoid valves, two for each section, allowing it to bend left and right. An air pump drives the system, with airflow regulated by a DC motor controller. I connected the snake to the electrofluidic system. And as a first test I wrote an Arduino script that toggles through a number of poses. Amazing to finally see it make its first moves. But I was not yet completely happy with the range of motion, so I decided to add a second pump to the electrofluidic system. And when I tried, it performed its breakdance again, but now it's much more energetic. Let's try to implement some snake locomotion. First I wanted to replicate that classic lateral undulation. I wrote an Arduino script that maps a sine wave across the different sections, bending them left or right based on thresholds. Slowly it came to life. I also added a variable to adjust the wave speed in real time. But there was one problem, it wasn't really moving forward. It only started propelling itself when it caught the edge of the work mat, which suggested one thing, it needed more friction. So I tried it on the blue foam again. And sure enough, it finally started to crawl forward. It might not be the fastest, but it's making its way. Turns out snakes have a superpower, the ability to control friction using their scales. Their scales possess a property called unisotropic friction, which means friction isn't equal in all directions. In some directions they provide very low friction, while in others friction is high. Anisotropic friction is crucial for turning a snake's undulating motion into a forward movement. And that brings us back to the question, why do so many snake robots have wheels? Well, wheels are a hack to create anisotropic friction. Think about it. Wheels provide very low friction in forwards and backwards motion, but high friction to the sides. But real snakes, they do it with far more elegance. Their scales act like tiny flexible hinges, gripping in one direction while sliding smoothly in the other. And by adjusting the angle of their scales, they can even control the friction dynamically. At the microscopic level, snake scales have fine surface textures that further enhance this directional friction. Inspired by this, I designed flexible scales that fit onto the existing scales. I printed them using this green flexible TPU filament and added them to my robot.
The bright green fits nicely with the snake aesthetic. Then I tested them on paper. Sliding forward felt smooth, but sliding backward created noticeable resistance. You could hear and see the friction in action. These TPU scales seem to show anisotropic friction. I placed the snake on the blue foam and turned it on. At first I was disappointed, because it did not really seem to move at all. Then something unexpected happened, the robot started moving sideways. And after a while it got even wilder. Well, this wasn't exactly the motion I intended. But honestly, how can you be mad at something with such a cute face? I mean, look at it! Let me know in the comments down below how would you improve this robotic snake. There was one more snake locomotion style I wanted to try. Rectilinear motion. That stealthy caterpillar-like movement. I modified the script to simultaneously activate both sides of the segments. And once I turned it on, it started crawling, even on that slippery cutting mat. Slowly but surely, it kept inching forward. This project wasn't just about building a robot, it transformed how I see snakes. Beneath their smooth slither lies a graceful dance of structure, friction and movement. Snakes remind us that transformation goes beyond the physical. It's a shift in perspective. Next time we're building another soft creature. Subscribe to not miss it.